Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center, and today we're taking a look at some stuff that anyone can afford. Pretty much anyone. Because we're looking at the best cheap pocket knives that you can get your hands on right now. Let's check them out. Now I'm certainly not the first person to say this, but we're definitely living in something of a golden age for cutlery. Between, you know, new innovations in materials, faster and more affordable manufacturing processes out there. All kinds of things have come together to make this probably the most exciting time to be a, a knife person and then at any point in history. And you see a lot of stuff on the high end of the market kind of pushing these innovations, but the stuff on the lower end actually benefits from this stuff too. We've got a lot of great cheap pocket knives out there on the market today. Um, and when I say cheap, I definitely don't mean quality. I'm just talking about how many dollars or whatever form of currency you're using that it's gonna take to put one of these in your pocket. Cause there's a lot of stuff here that feels phenomenal and honestly can kind of go toe to toe with stuff that costs a lot more. Now, the cool thing about cheap pocket knives is there's almost always a place for them, no matter who you are out there. Uh, if you're just getting started in the hobby, these are obviously a great place to look. If you're giving someone else their first knife, these are also some great places to look for that as well. Uh, if you've kind of graduated and you tend to carry more premium knives now, there's still a place for these even then. You can throw them in a bunch of toolboxes or glove boxes, great to have on hand. Uh, if you're going somewhere, you're worried about losing a knife, you can carry something without having to feel like you're carrying something that's going to fall on, fall apart on it. You can still carry something that's going to get the job done and feel nice doing it. So let's take a look at the first one and start off with a classic, the Buck 112 Ranger in their slim select form, which comes in today at just about 24 bucks. What I think is most impressive about this knife, what makes it so cool, apart from being just a really nice update on the Classic Ranger, is that for that price point, they've managed to keep the manufacturing of this knife right here in the USA. They didn't have to go to Taiwan or China, which is what everything else on the table in front of us uh, is going to be coming from. This is made right here in the USA. Now it definitely has that buck knife look, but of course updated for the way folks tend to carry their knives nowadays. First and foremost, a pocket clip. So this is not a, a belt pouch model like the original. And it's slimmer construction as well with a glass filled nylon handle. That lets them do a bunch of different colors as well. I particularly, particularly like this green one right here. We've also got dual thumb studs for one handed opening. Makes it nice and easy. And a slightly more toned down clip point shape. You've got a straight clip point rather than the aggressive scoop of the original. Just a great EDC blade coming in under that three inch mark. 420 HC steel, which Buck gets a lot of performance out of that despite the low cost of the material, comes together super nicely. Now, despite having a shorter blade at three inch mark, you can still get all four of your fingers on the handle, at least on my hands, which are a little bit larger than average. So most folks should have pretty much no problem with this knife. All right, next up, we're gonna go with the knife that kind of has been following the same format of the new Slim Selects from Buck for a number of years now, and that's the K-Bar Dozier Folding Hunter. And the prices on these are really good. Uh, this is a Taiwanese made knife. They start about 22 bucks for an Aus 8 stainless steel, which is a phenomenal deal for a great design. But the latest introduction here is a D2 steel blade, and that only bumps the price up to about $32. So for that, type of price point, while it may be a little harder to sharpen than some of the other uh, budget steels out there, that is an absolutely insane amount of edge retention per dollar. I mean, you get a lot of long lasting edge with this material. Still though, blade length just under three inches. We've got that nice spear point shape that's gonna be very versatile, perhaps even more so than the clip point of the buck. It has a single sided thumb stub, but you can actually switch that around. Uh, so like the buck, this will work well for lefties because you can also move that pocket clip over to either side as well. There's a few things I like about the handle here, particularly also. The lock back for one thing is mounted in the middle of the handle rather than at the end. Makes it a little bit easier if you need to close it one handed because you can kind of pop it there with your thumb, reach up with your index finger and close that. It's a little harder to do when it's there near the back. The other thing that's quite nice about the Dozier Folding Hunter is the shape of the handle overall. It's very neutral, and rather than having the abrupt cutoff of that buck, it's rounded over so that 
as your hands get larger, you're not going to get pinched off. It's just going to, your fingers are just going to start wrapping around the back, but I can still get a nice full hold on that. And this is just a very secure grip. And again, a lot of performance for your dollar in a very lightweight form factor because of those synthetic handle scales. All right, we're going to stick with the lock back here for a, uh, for another couple of knives and these previous two were kind of an evolution of each other. This knife is kind of the next evolution of the, uh, the lockback genre. Uh, the Bird Knives Harrier 2. Bird, of course, is kind of a, a budget subsidiary of Spyderco, and as such, you get a lot of the signature Spyderco design elements coming in at a price that's uh, just under 31 bucks. And this knife is a little bit larger than the Meadowlark, which has kind of been like the default Bird recommendation for a long time. Um, you get a little more blade length here and the way they're priced right now, it's less than a dollar difference uh, to step up to the larger blades. They might as well. Got about 3.3 inches of steel uh, and that's an 8CR series stainless. So good budget stuff, holds an edge a decent long time and it's going to be very easy to maintain as well. Again, we've got a mid-mounted lock back here and it has something called the David Boy Dent, which does a couple of things. One, it can help you uh, find that lock if you're not actually looking at it. And it's also supposed to prevent accidental disengagement if you're really gripping down on that knife. The handle is FRN and you've got a different take on the Spyderco bi-directional texturing. So you've got a lot of traction there, decent amount of length for all four of my fingers. And then you got a finger choil there around the pivot of the knife as well. So you can choke up, get a little extra real estate if you have really big hands or just get a little better fine control over that nice acute tip and just that blade that has fantastic slicing capabilities. Again, we've got nice ambidextrous operation here thanks to the lock, that large opening hole, which is gonna be real easy even if you're wearing heavier work gloves. And we've actually got a four position pocket clip here so you can carry it either side of your body, tip up or tip down, no problem. And really this is, I keep saying it, it's gonna be a theme a lot. This is an awful lot of knife for your 30, $31 right here. Now a lockback can certainly stand up to a lot of, uh, a lot of heavier uses, I think. Um, but pushing that even further is the company Cold Steel. And their take on the lockback looks just like a lockback from the outside, but their triad lock, as they call it, has a few things going on underneath the handle that you can't really see, apart from the fact that there's a stop pin here that make it an even more secure and long lasting mechanism than a traditional lockback. And they don't restrict it to their higher end stuff either. They put it on the budget stuff such as this ProLite Sport right here. Uh, normal price on this is just under 30 bucks. Now you've got a bit of a funky looking blade on this knife, but there is so much utility going on here. Steel is a German 4116, decently tough stuff. They actually use this in a lot of, uh, well, cold steel I don't think does, but a lot of companies uh, use this steel in kitchen knives because of just the durability of it. Got a really nice, uh, I guess technically a drop point blade, even though it does look kind of funky. Not too much belly, very usable point. Nice stone washed finish on this blade as well, which um, it's not the only one on this table that has that, but it's one of the few, which is something I really like on a blade that's gonna get worked hard because as you scratch the knife up from use, the scratches are gonna hide out a little bit in that finish. The handle is a glass reinforced nylon again. Not such an aggressive texture like that bird, but you got a little bit of an orange peel texture so that it's not slick and has a little bit of a better feel going on. Reversible pocket clip as well. So again, nice and ambidextrous overall. Plenty of length here for my hands as well. And one of the benefits of that particular blade shape is this cutout on the spine gives you a great place to put your index finger. If you're kind of doing some tip down work, some scoring, gives a really nice place for control that you're not likely to slip out of. All right, we're gonna take a look at uh, some different locking mechanisms right now. Uh, and we'll take a look first at another knife that like this ProLite um, is just one of those very durable knives at this price point that has really proven itself over the years. And that is the Ontario Rat 1 or the Rat Model 1. Regular price on these uh, starts at just over 30 bucks uh, for the standard version. There is a smaller version available also, and definitely a like a hardworking utility player, as I said, but even more than that, I think this knife is absolutely famous in sort of the bushcraft and survival camping and outdoor world because it's got the right blade shape for it. It's got a nice chunky grip. There's a little bit of girth there, as you can see, and plenty of length that you know, a bushcrafter is gonna love it. Any camper, great uh, as a backup hunting blade, food prep while you're out there, 
It's just got a great do-it-all blade shape. Aus 8 steel, which is uh, molecularly very similar to that 8CR series on that bird from before, uh, but it's a Japanese-made steel made in a, a very tightly controlled factory. Definitely really good stuff. We've got a full flat grind, really great slicer, thanks to that geometry and that belly out there too. Makes it good on the, uh, the pull slices and good for that, uh, that skinning and hunting type of thing too, if you're the, the type of person who wants to take a folding knife on the hunt. So we've still got a four position pocket clip and dual opening thanks to those uh, thumb studs there, just like the bird. Uh, it works well in either hand from that respect or carried on either side in that respect, but locking mechanism here is right side biased. This is a liner lock as you can see, but it does hold it open quite nicely. And again, just a great feel in the hand for some of those heavier uses. One thing worth mentioning here, these are FRN handles. There are a bunch of colors available, but because of the simple construction here, you don't have nested liners or anything like that. This is just a simple slab uh, with some holes countersunk in it, essentially. Very popular platform for folks who like to modify their knives, make their own scales, do fun stuff with it. So it's a fun project. Even if you maybe outgrow this knife after a while, definitely worth keeping around. All right, next up, we're gonna go with uh, some more compact designs. Uh, even though most of the stuff here uh, early on is very easy to carry, these next few are, are even easier, even a little more narrow. And the first one, actually designed by the same folks who designed that rat, this is sold under the SE brand. This is the Zancudo folder. And this is another one like that Dozier. We've got two tiers. We've got an OS 8 level and a D2 level. OS 8 certainly going to be easier to sharpen and they start uh, at about 30 bucks, but for just three more dollars, you can get this D2 blade for even more performance. Now, when I say performance, I am talking about edge retention in particular. Obviously, OS 8 is going to be much more stainless than this D2, but we've got a great three inch drop point blade here, almost a spear point, in fact. Nice thin steel, full flat grind, another great slicing knife. We've also got a frame lock on the back of this one rather than a liner lock. Um, some folks like that for security, it might have a little bit more of a feeling of con confidence because you have a wider contact patch with the tang of the blade. You've also got a stonewashed finish here on the back, which matches that blade. Again, keeping it nice and rugged. Only a two position clip on this knife though. This is a right side biased knife. The lock is of course right side biased as well. So that's a little bit easier to, to forgive than something on like those lockbacks from earlier. Those definitely benefit from having the, uh, the left side clips. Now the handles on the front, a bunch of different colors available on this series as well. And this is an FRN handle scale. Uh, not as good for the modding as that Ontario because you do have a nested liner there in the front. So it's a bit more complex uh, in its construction there. One word to note about the handle. Yes, it is definitely a little bit of a funky shape, but that's because they designed this one, not so much for looks, but the way it works and the way it fits in the hand. It's just about perfectly shaped to really lock in there. It's a very intuitive hold, feels very secure. So this is definitely one of those places where there's definitely a method to their madness. All right, next up, we're gonna look at another small knife. And this is one, if you're not so, uh, super keen on the more rugged look of the uh, Zancudo there, you want something maybe a little fancier looking uh, without the fancy price tag, check out the CRKT Piet, which is a Jesper Vaknes design coming in at 30 bucks right now. And really there's a bunch of CRKTs that could go on this, this list. They make some of the best quote unquote cheap knives around. And again, I'm talking cheap in terms of dollars, not in terms of quality. And this one certainly has that going on for it. We've got an inset liner lock here, which is a little bit fancier. And what's kind of cool is they kept that, uh, that liner black as well. So it really blends in with the black of the synthetic handle shape there. It makes, uh, gives it a little bit of a cleaner look overall. Nice little orange peel texture here as well, and a nice pop of blue here on the back with that nice bright backspacer. As I mentioned, this is a slightly more compact knife. This is kind of a three and a half finger grip for me, but if you have small hands, you might be able to get all four hand or four fingers on there. And just a really nice blade shape going on here, about 2.7 inches long. This is a type of drop point that really speaks to me. The tip is still nice and narrow, so you're gonna be able to do some fine work. We got that high flat grind for some really nice slicing and HCR series stainless steel on board for this guy as well. Now, normally a blade cutout like this makes it easy to open with either side, but it's a little harder to access actually from the left hand because they do give you a cutout on the front to get to that opening hole. But 
you still can carry it easily on the left side because we've got a reversible deep carry pocket clip in this case. Just a really cool, really nice looking and feeling little knife. May get a little overlooked in CRKT's lineup, but definitely worth a look right now. All right, for the next knife, we're still sticking with the compact, uh, more compact carries, but we're getting a little bit more into kind of the modern era of knife design. And one of the things you're gonna see on the rest of these things here now are a ball bearing based pivot, which used to be only a very premium feature in flipper knives or in any kind of knife, but we've been seeing it more and more on cheaper and cheaper knives. And the thing you get out of that generally is some really fantastic action. And I think the poster boy for that is the CJRB RIA, which I've got two of right here actually. Um, there's a carbon fiber version here, as you can see, it looks nice and classy with these flat carbon fiber scales. But there's also a G10 version or a few G10 versions at the low end of the price point, and they actually have a contoured scale for a little bit, know, a little bit nicer feel in my mind. And both of them just start at $32. Blades here, just under three inches again, and 12C27, which is a Swedish steel from Sandvik, and Actually, looking at the table, probably is my favorite steel here on the table. I'm a big fan of this stuff. Uh, you see it on a lot of the, uh, the Mora knives in their stainless forms. Nice and tough. You got a really nice amount of edge stability and very easy to strop, hone, and maintain uh, without kind of killing yourself. I just think it's a somewhat overlooked steel that definitely is worthy of attention. But the overall shape, I think, is really nice because, it, like I said, it is modern. You've got that, uh, that ball bearing pivot but it has a sort of shape reminiscent of older school pocket knives in a way. So if that's your kind of jam, if you like the old, cool, old school stuff, but you want something that is more modern, definitely worth a look at the Rhea. Now this one is decidedly right hand biased. We do have a deep carry pocket clip, but it is not reversible. Liner lock, of course, right hand biased. And as you can see, the blade folds in almost completely and the thumb stud actually tucks into a little cutout in the handle as well. It is a disadvantage for lefties, obviously, but the advantage you gain from that is one of the best thumb stud actions out there. The first time I, I flicked one of these open, uh, if you're a regular of this channel, you'll know I've said it felt almost assisted because it just pops out super nice. Now there are higher end versions of this knife available with uh, some fancier handle scales and some powder metallurgy blades. Even those, for what you get, they don't cost a lot, but we're getting to around the $50 mark at that point. And while certainly very attainable, I almost don't want to call $50 cheap anymore. I'm trying to keep the list a little bit lower. Um, definitely uh, no more than 40 bucks for the rest of the stuff here. Um, but you think even especially with some of the sale prices on these things, we're ranging from about 20 to 40 bucks on these knives, a lot of quality and a lot of, uh, of value for your dollar. But on that high end mark, uh, I've got another CRKT and I went back and forth on whether to actually include it in this video since 40 was kind of the, the top end of uh, the knives I was looking at today. And I have featured this knife in a lot of videos recently, but that's because it is one of the best, the CEO flipper coming in at 40 bucks. Aus 8 steel, about 3.35 inches of it. Ball bearings in the pivot. This is the IKBS bearing pivot. Now the original CEO, which was a, a non-flipper knife, actually had a lot in common, I think, with that Rhea because it had, an, again, really phenomenal thumb stud action with a nice thumb stud that kind of tucked into the handle there. But this flipper version is a bit more ambidextrously friendly. It is a right hand biased lock, but you've got that flipper mechanism and you've got a reversible deep carry clip mounted from the uh, tail of the knife as well but it's a fantastic, easy to carry gentleman's knife, a little bit longer, but because it's so narrow and because the blade really disappears in there, very, very compact and easy knife to carry. Pull it out, really nice flipping action on a very precisely ground and agile blade. All right, let's get full on into the ball bearing based flippers, which that's like the thing these days. Most of the high end releases these days tend to be titanium frame lock flippers. And while you're not going to really find titanium in this price range, you are going to find the ball bearing flipping and uh, some frame locks as well. And you got to talk about the Kershaw Natrix, this version coming in at $38 right now. You've got KVT ball bearings in the pivot, you've got a flipper, 
And instead of a full frame lock, we've got Kershaw's sub frame lock, where they essentially anchor that lock bar to a different color or different type of handle material there on the back. So we get this tan G10 on this model on both the front and the back side, but you've got the security of a frame lock. We've also got a deep carry pocket clip, as you can see, which is reversible and the flipping action, quite good. And just a really nice shape overall for a slightly more stylish, but still very utility driven everyday carry. We've got a three and a quarter inch blade, 8CR series stainless with that nice stonewashed finish that I like so much there. And like I said, it's got a really good shape. It nestles in the hand quite nicely. The blade with the tip coming down is kind of like a modified Warncliffe. Gonna be really good on some, some heavier aggressive cuts through like cardboard and stuff like that. Very easy to use the tip for scoring or draw cuts. Just a very nice piece overall. All right, next up is another CJRB. This was actually one of their initial releases when the brand was introduced. This is the Taiga Flipper coming in at 34 bucks and another ball bearing equipped flipper. We've got a liner lock in this case rather than a frame lock. And again, kind of like that Ontario from before, nice simple construction is what helps them keep the price down on this. You've got full liners, non-skeletonized, non-nested with the G10 on the front. They do give you a deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. So the carry and the flipping action is nice and ambidextrous, but again, liner lock, so it is right hand biased. But the action on these is really where you get your money's worth on these guys. Flips open quite nicely. Now they've got a number of models that sit at this price point that could have made uh, this list very easily, but I went with the Taiga because I think the blade shape here covers the most bases out of, uh, out of those things kind of priced in this similar range that are in the similar size. We've got D2 steel, three and a half inches, stonewashed finish, high flat grind, nice versatile drop point shape. You can pretty much take this style of blade and put it into use wherever you might need a sharp edge. All right, last but not least, I've actually got two knives that I'm gonna present together. You've got the Civivi Ortis and the Civivi Badlands Vagabond, both with essentially the same handle coming in at 40 bucks right now. And while I'm not gonna necessarily declare these the winner, there's really a, a lot that's hard to deny about everything you get and the amount of attention to detail and the fit and finish that you get with these two designs. Now the blade length on each is about three and a quarter inches long and you've got this nice upswept clip point on the Ortis with a little bit of a, uh, a thumb hole opener there if you don't wanna use the flipper or you could go with the more drop point oriented Badlands Vagabond. This particular one has a black stone wash finish on it. Both are hollow ground. You've got a nice swedge on this one here. And if you don't wanna use the flipper tab here, you've got those dual thumb studs on this model. Now, I did say earlier that I think the, uh, the 12C27 on the CJRB Rhea was my favorite that was here. This one might be a close second. This is a 9CR series stainless, which is a step up from the 8CRs. Performance levels should be somewhere on par with something like 440C, which is an American steel. And really, again, at 40 bucks, really, really good performance to dollar ratio. It's gonna hold an edge a good long time, and Civivi does a few other things uh, that really lets them capitalize on the performance you get here. For one thing, a nice, thin edge, probably the thinnest out of anything here on the table. So there's not a lot of resistance right at the cutting edge itself. It is razor sharp, of course, out of the box. And with the hollow grind, they're able to keep that edge really thin, even after a lot of sharpening sessions where you might be walking up the blade a little bit. But you may find you actually need to sharpen it a little bit less, especially at the beginning, uh, because even if it is starting to get a little dull, the edge is so thin that it kind of counteracts that a little bit. The handles are nicely designed. It's a FRN, so it's not a G10 handle, but it feels really nicely done. You've got some nice fine milling here. And the shape overall, kind of like that Dozier from before, it's nice and neutral, no finger grooves to get in the way. So a lot of different hand sizes are gonna find this very comfortable and very easy to use. We do have a two position pocket clip here and it is deep carry. And one of the nice features you see here, again, that you're starting to see more of on some budget oriented stuff, but it's something that's definitely been trickling down from the higher end. We don't have a lanyard hole, but we do have a hidden lanyard point here on the back integrated into the back spacer. So that's one less hole they have to drill through the handle and clutter things up that way. Keeps it a little bit cleaner of a look. And then the action on the budget side of things, Civivi might be doing it the best and it definitely feels really phenomenal right here on this particular knife. 
All right, that's it for today on my list of the best cheap knives you can get right now.、Uh, let me know your favorites. Do you like anything here, or maybe you've got a different favorite cheap knife? You can let us know in the comments. But hopefully, this、uh, puts you on the right track. Like I said, if you're getting into the hobby, if you're looking to to give someone their first knife, but don't want to spend too much, but still want to get them something good. Definitely take a look at these guys right here, and to do so, we'll leave links in the description to take you over to theknifecenter.com. While you're over there, make sure to sign up for our knife rewards program too, because if you're going to spend your money on one of these knives, even though they don't cost too much, you might as well earn some free money to spend on your next one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center signing off. See you next time.